It's another Friday and you know how we do it on Fridays. We have fun because we get to know the people we admire. One of such is Dr. Elsie Ifa Kaufman. She's an academic, a biomedical engineer and popularly known for the National Math and Science Quiz as a quiz mistress. Good to see you. Hello, Aisha. I'm <laughs> sure this time you learned your lesson, so your bag was safe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've stopped taking handbags to the set. <laughs> I now carry a paper bag okay. and I have the barest of minimum in the bag. <laughs> so even if you get it, you probably get the questions for that day and that's it. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Yes. I also have the police detail that goes everywhere with me. So. It's very difficult to get close to that paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> but they say you are from every girls. And mm. so, for instance, the last one that ended, you did everything to allow the other DS carry the day. Because oh, really? the other DS are your men. Is that so? <laughs> I didn't realize I was doing anything. In fact, if you speak to the Odadiers themselves, mm. they will probably say I was too hard on them. So I guess I'm doing something right if everybody is unhappy with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so no, no, I didn't do anything. They, they are very good contestants, very good students, and they showed what they had. That mm. was it, yes. So that was just by the way, but I must say you make it a joy um, watching the uh, National Science and Maths craze. And of course, science is a big deal, especially when it comes to women. And so I don't want to agree that it's a male-dominated area, but that's what it is. You make it look very simple. It looks like you enjoy what you do. A lot of people really want to know who Dr. Elsie Ifa Kaufman is. Tell me about you. So uh, you know I'm Elsie, Elsie Ifa Kaufman. What I do now is that I'm an academic, yes, I'm a biomedical engineer. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Ghana. And I've been doing this since 2001. I've been at the University of Ghana since 2001. Okay. But there's a whole lot of history before that. I mm -hmm. guess that's what you want to know about. Yes. Uh, I was born in Accra. Okay. Yes, I was born in Accra. Oh, no, again. Uh, few. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, yes, I was born in Accra. My mother tells me that I was born at the maternity block of the Kulebu Teaching Hospital. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, some 51 years ago. Wow. Yes. September. So actually I turned 51, 51 years. Yes, yes. You don't look it. Mm. My goodness. I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm very blessed. You qualify for a 16 year old. Oh, that, that's a bit <laughs> of an exaggeration, don't you think? It's not. <laughs> You don't look it. Uh, You're really blessed. Uh, yes, I'm Thank very God blessed. For your life. I'm very blessed. Mm. Yes. So yes. at the Kolebu, at the Kolebu block. Teaching Hospital, that's where I was born, and my parents, both of them, were teachers, okay. moving around a lot, and mm. so from my my earliest memories starts really not from Accra but from Winneba. My okay. parents were both in uh, Winneba. My father was teaching at the ATTC. Uh, Advanced Teacher Training College, okay. I think it's now Winneba University. Uh -huh. Yes, okay, University of Education. Winneba, yes. Mm. But those days it was ATTC. Okay. Yes. So that's where uh, I have my earliest memories. Mm. And my mother was also a teacher in primary school. Yes. Mm. And um, that's how I also started schooling. You know, okay. my first school was the ATTC Demonstration School. And from there, my parents moved again, went to Kufuridia. Okay. My father was assistant headmaster at Ghana, Ghana Secondary School. I can understand yes. that teachers, they keep transferring uh -huh. them here and there. So I went to Nanakwe Kubwating Experimental School. Mm. And from there I sat the um, common entrance. I actually did that twice. The wow. <laughs> the <Why>? first time. <laughs> well, I was skipped from my class to go join the seniors to write the exam. Okay. And I passed and I was admitted to uh, St. Rose's. Because you were smart. Well, but I was too small. Teachers, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was uh, my, uh, Yes, my father said I was too young. I was 10 years old. I mean, I was too young. I can imagine. I, I was very upset at him for not allowing me to go. <laughs> but later on, I understood him. Yeah. I understood. I needed to mature a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 10 so, years in secondary uh, yes. school. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the second time I passed again, and then I went to a big girls. Okay. Secondary school. Mm. Yes. And from there, my parents moved on to uh, Kumase. My father was headmaster of uh, Tia Madia Secondary School. Okay. 
Yes, they really must. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they went to Kumase and I was still at school, boarding school. It was later on that I joined them. So they moved when I was still at school, boarding school, my first year. Okay. It was a terrible time for me. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes. How old were you then? Uh, I turned 12 in school. In a brick girl? Yes. My goodness. Yes. 12 years? Yes. In secondary school? Yes, first year. How was it like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 12 years, leaving mom and dad and yes, being on your own. Yes, when I got there, I was 11 still. Um, yes, I was one of the smallest. Uh, and looking at your stature. <laughs> I'm bigger now, believe it or not. I'm much bigger than I used to be. I, I was really imagine. tiny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, so I was very small and I was afraid of the seniors. I, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be as food. quiet as possible. I was already very quiet. But I mean, they were looking for your trouble. Oh yeah, they were looking for my trouble. <laughs> you know, at Ebu Girls, when we went the first year, they put us on a different campus from the seniors. But the seniors would come across the bridge. There was an overhead bridge mm -hmm. joining the two campuses and they would come across the bridge just to come and cause trouble for us. <laughs> so, and you know, and the prospectors. Mm -hmm. They had all the things we were to bring, and yeah. I remember this very well. Among them was brazier. <laughs> My mother made sure I had it. I didn't need it because there was nothing to put it over. <laughs> <laughs> These seniors would come in tension for me. That's what they came for. They would ask me, and they knew I had, so I had to show them. Then they would laugh at me. <laughs> it made you feel bad. Well, I, I was also going through uh, homesickness. Mm -hmm. And my, as I said, my parents had moved to Kumase from Kufuridia, and so I didn't know where they were. Okay. It wasn't like those these days now that you have mobile phones, you can go call them, no. So there was no contact. I didn't know where my parents had gone. I didn't know where they were. I didn't know where my family was. Wow. And here I was in first year in school, dealing with my own trouble, <laughs> and then you come and disturb me with <laughs> things like <Yeah>. this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Must have been tough for you. <laughs> Yeah. So how did you overcome all of that? Oh, well, I remember the first day that uh, we went, I went to school. I went with my dad and my mom and my dad stayed in the car. He, he doesn't like this. He didn't used to like those emotional type things. So I went with my mom to the dorm. She because helped me cry. to make, yes, <laughs> make the bed. And, and so I kept asking, mommy, are you going to leave me here? So you're Aww, going. <laughs> I'm <laughs> year old. Mm. So she told me, you are going to be fine. And I saw my mates, some of my mates and some of the girls coming and going all bigger than me. <laughs> and my mom told me, this is not about size. <laughs> it's about the brain. It's about what you can do. And I know you are okay. You will be fine. Everything will be fine with you. You will do so well. Don't worry. Everything is going to be okay. And I believed her. So uh, thinking that my mom had said everything would be fine. Everything really would be fine. That was enough and then I, I was also even from that age I, I really I used to pray she told me keep praying God is with you you'll be fine <laughs> and so that's exactly what I did that's what kept me through those difficult times mm. Mm -hmm. wonderful which part of the country do you come from I come from the central region okay my mom is from Asin, uh, Asin Damai. Okay. <laughs> and then my father is from Asin Saman Kese. Oh. not too far Okay. Same route. He didn't want to go far. Mm. That's understandable. Well, <laughs> that's your <their> story. It's a company. Kakra. But they are saying, they are saying that we speak to you. We speak okay. to you. We live among the fantasies, but we speak to you. We speak to you. Yes. Saying, both from your mom, your mom's side and your father's side. Yes. They speak to you, yes. not fancy. Yes, but my mom speaks very good fancy. So how come Eka? My how kakra. come yours is Kakra? Mm -hmm. It's more the tree. <laughs> well, because you were um, a daughter for two to, to teachers, they were speaking English all the time to you, I guess. No, actually, not all the time. We combined the speaking English and the teaching with the tree. Oh, yes. No, actually, not all the time. We combined the English with the tree. Mm. That's what we spoke at home, yes. Okay, <laughs> so of course, um, from a Brie Girls, you mm -hmm. went outside the country to further your education yes. in Wales, um, England, in Pennsylvania, US, You'll and all that. You'll be reading about me. I'm huh? sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that the, um, I, I mean, growing up in Ghana and over there, the experiences are different. Mm -hmm. um, share with me, how was it like? I mean, did, did you want to study science? Was that what you wanted to study or it came by, it met you halfway? 
it's it's very interesting how I wound up where I I have <laughs> let me put it in the present <laughs> because none of this was your passion. predicted okay okay I was a good student I was I had I was always a good student in school I can tell and so um, at a Briggles, you know, it got to a point from three, we were taking all the subjects. It was in form three that we had to narrow down to which subjects we we're going to take to the O levels. Okay. At that time, because I had been a good student, I could have done any of them. Okay. And the way we're, the teachers were doing it in those days was to have us write an exam, and then based on the results of the exam, they would put some lines, you know, top students, science, next, whatever subjects, and then so on, right? Okay. Obviously, I was in the top group, and so they decided that I would be a science student. Okay. Although, uh, I should have known, in the house, I was a house doctor. Oh, wow. <laughs> my, How? My, my brothers would go play football all day long, come back with their injuries, and it was my responsibility to tend to, to the wounds. <laughs> <laughs> so I was house doctor. Okay. Uh -huh. so, so. But in Ghana, you know, even now, if a student uh, studies science and that's well, they expect them to go to medical school. And, or if a student is seen as um, a good student, they're expected to go do science and then follow Definitely. it up with medicine. Definitely. Uh -huh. so, so there were expectations. Although I think there were science also that I could have done other things. Mm -hmm. okay. Was that what mom and dad wanted you to do? They never pressured me to do anything. Okay. That is one blessing I, I thank my parents for always they never pressured me to do anything the only guy my you. yes my, my father's uh, rule was okay do whatever you want to do but make sure you are doing it well and you, you must be you <laughs> must be the best or among the best we had championships <laughs> in the house all the time so you chose what you wanted to do but then you were responsible for making sure that you did really well how many of you four of us four i'm of the you. eldest yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many girls, how many boys? Two women and two men. Okay. The men are bigger and taller than us. <laughs> uh -huh. so I'm probably the, the smallest. <laughs> and the eldest. And the eldest. Did they try to walk over you because of your size? Uh, no, they couldn't. I mean, how? <laughs> my sister my sister, <laughs> my sister, sister is a very fun-loving woman. Okay. A very fun. She's, she's the shortest. She's the shortest among us, but she's the most vocal and <laughs> the most fun-loving of all of us. And she, she would always uh, challenge you, you know, uh, make fun of you, uh, make sure that <laughs> you're uncomfortable, send you on... Uh, adventures okay. you know with her nothing is quiet mm. uh -huh. so uh, yes we have that kind of relationship and the, 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 the men now the boys in those days they were I got along very well with them in those days yes wow. uh -huh. and how many subjects were you doing in school that the um, form finally you had to choose which I one you wanted to specialize yes I think we got to a point where we were doing 13 or so Wow. It was it was unbelievable. Wow. I mean, we're doing things like commerce, accounting, uh, everything, <laughs> art, um, history. Okay. Of course, the sciences: biology, physics, chemistry, geography, chemistry. French languages. Okay. She, um, she was tough for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Yes, she was tough. Okay, she French. French. You know, she was tough for you. She was really tough. A bear. And uh, to Ebe so. <laughs> and, oh, I think my level of G is about class four now. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> so you didn't like G? Not that I didn't like it, but it was not easy. Yeah. It was not easy. I, that, I think that was my toughest subject. But the rest of them, I was doing all of them. And so even after we finished selecting our subjects or when we were placed in the different classes, my classmates still used to bring me other things from other courses. I was still studying along with them wow. because I enjoyed Even all of them. Even though you had um, yes. specialized yes. in the science. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. That's interesting. What would you say was your awkward moment or your challenging moment, apart from you being teased as 12 years old and then you bringing Brazil and all of that? What, what would you say were the challenging moments in every girls? Okay, so form two. This was uh, 82, the time of the drought in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Some of you are too young, you don't know anything about <laughs> this. But there was a time that we had difficult times. There was no food. Wow. 
wow. and we were in boarding school. Hmm. So uh, this yellow corn, I think, was donated from somewhere. Yeah. And they would make kinky out of it. Mm -hmm. The corn, the kinky was as hard as rock. Food was hard to come by. Breakfast, I remember, oh goodness. Breakfast, we used to have cocoa made out of this yellow corn. Mm -hmm. No sugar. They mm. would tell us, every once in a while, they will give us a banana and say we should sweeten, you know, eat the banana and eat the <laughs> <laughs> And take it alongside the cocoa. Mm. And it was dry season. The young ladies now in the Brigals, they should be very grateful. They don't know the history. <laughs> in those days, whenever the rains went away, there was no water anywhere. Mm. We had to climb down the valley, go to the valley. You know, we're on top of a hill. Yeah. Go to the valley or search different places, watering holes. Mm. Up till today, I don't drink much water because of that experience. Oh my goodness. Yes. It's something because that you had uh, yes. to take in little just yes. to save. So yes, well, this is what we had to do. We had to go down the valley, fetch water. You need two containers because one, you have to take one to the school kitchen for storage, mm -hmm. and then you keep one for yourself. OK. Uh -huh. And form two, you are still not a senior. Yeah. A senior can accost you at any time and take your and one. Take your, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> <Where they're heartless. laughs> it was it was it was difficult i mean you would go and then if you found water sometimes you will find these ponds of water there will be tadpoles in there mm. which water are you going to drink my god so when you we came back to the dorm that's when we use t-shirts or something to to filter the water but so you know where you got it from yeah. you remember what that water looked like you so remember the number of tadpoles in there god so it's best to just resign yourself to not drinking any water Jeez. How would you survive? Yes, it was difficult. So those were very difficult times. And I remember I was nearly kicked out of school during Why? that period. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so some of the girls had agitated. My dear headmistress, oh dear, may she rest in, in peace. <laughs> Mrs. Joyce Sibe. Oh. She's one of the people I look up to. One of my inspirations. Wow. Mrs. Joyce Sibe. Yes. So they had threatened her. They sent an anonymous letter to her that they want to go home. <laughs> they wanted to go home. Because of the situation at that Because of the situation time. at school. Mm. And so she sent out a message through the prefects that okay. anyone who wants to go home should sign, you know, put their names down. I had just come from the valley with my bucket of water, struggling, crying, and somebody approached me that do I want to go home? I said, yes, of course. I didn't know about this agitation on campus. Okay. So they put my name down as one of the people that want Innocently. to go home. Innocently. <laughs> Innocently. Then Mrs. Sesebe called the meeting. Started calling names. You want to go home, huh? <laughs> called my name. Elsiefa, you want to go home. Your father is a headmaster. Do you think when you go home, things are better? <laughs> <laughs> so she asked the people to go home. Meanwhile, I didn't know how to go home. <laughs> a brief took me. how? I didn't know how to go. <laughs> so what did you do? There was another young lady whose name had been written. We decided that we won't go home because we don't know how to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we hid for a while. Then that evening when the rest who wanted to really knew how to go home and had gone, <laughs> when they had left, we went to look for her house, headmistress's house. We had never been there before. <gasps> to go and plead with her that we don't know how to go home. We don't mean any harm. We didn't even know about this, this agitation. We just, someone asked us and we agreed to put our names down. And she understood. God bless her soul. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> what my father would have done to me. <laughs> so from Abri Girls, after all the stress, you were able to make it. Then you went outside the country. Tell me about it. I'm sure the experiences are not the same. Not at all. Uh, I will skip all the process of how I wound up going there. But again, it was uh, Mrs. Joyce Sibi who did that for me. She okay. recommended me oh, for wow. the scholarship program. Oh, okay. And that's how I wound up going outside Ghana. She spotted you as a bright student. And she, what, recommended you? Yes. For how? Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the United World Colleges. Mm. So this was a, a group, is still, they are still around. In fact, there are even more of them now mm. than in my day. Okay. Uh -huh. So there are a group of colleges, pre-university colleges mm -hmm. around the world, different parts of the world. Okay. And the purpose is to promote peace and international understanding. They take young people. Uh, so Atlanta College is the oldest one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's the one I went to, the one in Wales, okay. UK. Okay. Uh -huh. So they take young people from around the world, different countries. When I went, uh, there were, I think, 100 and, hmm, 
170 countries represented. Wow. <laughs> Something like this. Wow. Or 168. Wow. Uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of countries. I, I, I mean, I think I'm getting my numbers wrong. There were 170 of us. Mm. Yes, from all around the world. Uh, we were put in dorms, four students from four different countries in each room. Okay. Uh -huh. And the idea was for us to learn from each other and for us to return to our home countries to make a difference. So it was an experience, a two-year experience, life-changing experience. Mm. Yes. When I went there, I went to study um, science, of course. So you had, we did the international baccalaureate. So I had three higher level subjects and three subsidiary level subjects. Okay. For my higher levels, I took physics, chemistry, and biology. And for subsidiary level, I did mathematics, uh, French, and English okay. literature. Yes. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> you did French. I did French. Come Actually, on. I took French out to university, but so that's another matter. Oh, uh -huh. comment ça va? No, ça va bien, merci. <laughs> Et toi? <laughs> Je remercie, mon Dieu. <laughs> oh, 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 la la. <laughs> Me too, on pay, on pay. So don't go any further. Dr. Elsie Ifa Kaufman is my guest on PM Personality Profile. Remember, she's a biomedical engineer. I'm sure you are wondering what that is. When we return from this break, she'll be telling us what her job entails. Stay with me. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, Dr. Elsie Ifa Kaufman. I'm having fun talking to her because she's sharing a lot of um, experiences um, getting to the top. Doc, so you were telling me about how the whole uh, scholarship panned out and then you finally found yourself out there. Yes. Okay, so um, the United World Colleges get their students from mainly national uh, committees. So the National Committee for Ghana organizes a, a, proce a process mm. for selecting students to go. Okay. And my year, they were selecting three students to go on scholarship to the different, three different United World Colleges. Mm. The one in the US, the one in Canada, and then mine, the one in the UK. So what they had done was to write to the schools. And my headmistress, Mrs. Sesebe, decided that I would be a good candidate. Hmm. So she called me, get on call to headmistress's office. Hmm. <laughs> it could be it could anything, be, mixed be anything. feelings. I knew I hadn't done anything <laughs> wrong. <laughs> so I was a bit surprised when I was called. And when I went, she told me, well, this opportunity has come up. Oh, wow. And I'm recommending you for it. Okay. That means you need to go to Accra and find out what they are going to do. It's probably an exam, so get ready, you go write an exam. Hmm. And I was put in the school bone shaker. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you get to wherever you're going, you have pains all over your body. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we came to Accra. I think it was the West Africa uh, Exams Council. Council. Yes, like. that's where we had it that year. And when I got there, I was late. People were already sitting around writing, busily writing. Oh my goodness. It was an exam. <laughs> they were to write an essay. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, topic was 1986 has been declared the International Year of Peace. You still remember? Yes. Okay. Write an essay on peace and international understanding, something like this. And I sat down <laughs> and started writing. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Were you scared when you saw the question? Well, yes, it's a, this is out of my uh, comfort zone. I yes. mean, if you give me the calculations, no problem. <laughs> but to write those essay was a bit unusual. <laughs> so, but I did write the essay and uh, I was selected. I was shortlisted. They had an interview for us. Mm. I went to meet the panel. Interesting questions. They asked me, what shows that I'm Ghanaian? <laughs> How will I show that I'm Ghanaian if I go to this international school? I answered to the best of my ability. <laughs> and yes, when they finally selected the three, I was one, the first one to be selected. Wow. Yes. It completely changed the path I was on. And that's how I wound up going to the UK, <laughs> to the United World College of the Atlantic. Okay. Yes. To study? To study my subjects, which I have mentioned to you, the mm. higher level and subsidiary level. Mm. Now, Teaching methods were completely different. I remember what I surprised me most was the labs, physics lab. Mm. Here in Ghana, the 
first time I had seen an electronic circuit was a week before the O-levels, <laughs> where we were told we should go and look at the circuit. <laughs> okay. And I remember very well, I went to the lab and I saw these wires all over the place. And I was thinking that, no, there should be bars of metal because you know how you draw the circuit, everything straight yes. lines? Yes. And so I said, what are these wires? <laughs> Wait a minute. So that was the first time. Compare that to when I went to the United World College of the Atlantic. They teach you the concepts, mm. right? And then we were free to even design our own labs. Wow. So you go to lab, just make sure you know what you want. Go talk to the assistant. They will provide you with everything and you just demonstrate the concepts. It was wow. a completely different, different. way. Of, uh -huh. Let's talk about your profession, biomedical engineer. What does it entail? What do you do as a biomedical engineer? <laughs> Okay, so it's an exciting, it's an exciting discipline. Mm. It's applying the sciences, mathematics, and all the various types of engineering mm. to solving problems in healthcare and biology. Okay, so mainly, if it's biomedical, it's mainly the healthcare, right? So solving problems in healthcare using science, math, and all the various engineering skills. So it's extremely broad. So if you go to a hospital now, even the doctors, they can't do their work without medical equipment. Okay. So this is a modern hospital is highly reliant on medical technology. Mm -hmm. So if you want to diagnose a disease, all kinds of technologies, you know, imaging technology, the MRI, right? Yeah. CAT scan, mm -hmm. x-ray. Mm -hmm. If you want to monitor a patient, patient monitor, right? Even stethoscope, thermometer. Okay. These are all technologies involved in healthcare, right? Yes. Okay. If you want to um, help a patient out, you know, patient that has certain body parts not working <laughs> or <laughs> disease, damaged, whatever it is, okay. right? I'm sure you've heard of transplantation. Yes. Right? So they will take somebody's uh, kidney organ or, or kidney something. and give and uh -huh. transplant. We don't have enough people donating these body parts, do we? Uh -huh. No. So you'll find biomedical <laughs> engineers trying to design these body parts so okay. that they can be transplanted into okay. human beings. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. You find uh, people, engineers also, who take data. You know, we collect a lot of data on our patients. Mm -hmm. So they try to understand the data and help the doctors to make decisions on treatment methods. Mm. They are also biomedical engineers. Wow. If you go into development of medicines, vaccines, there are engineers involved. Okay. Those would be biomedical engineers. So mm -hmm. basically what you are doing, is we are applying all the various types of engineering. Mm. I haven't even mentioned the hospital building itself. Okay. Okay, so you take the hospital building, a whole hospital building. Mm -hmm. A hospital is different from a house, which is why it surprises me in Ghana, somebody will move to a different house and use the old house as a hospital. <laughs> That's not supposed to work that way. <laughs> the hospitals are specialized structures, yeah. right? So civil engineers are to, you know, civil engineers, architects are involved in designing and so on. A biomedical engineer will bring the ideas on board to do that. So we have hospital engineers, I mean, people who design hospitals. Okay. Uh -huh. mm. So some biomedical engineers are involved in this. So some will be working alongside the uh, civil engineers, architects, design, and decide what equipment even goes into a hospital. So oh. it's extremely broad, broad. very, very broad. Mm. In fact, if you do it at the first degree, you are capable of doing anything afterwards mm. because you get, you get a very broad education. Also, you have a quantitative mind. Okay. So you can apply anywhere. You can fit yes. everywhere. So some of our graduates go to on to do medical medicine. Yes. Okay. okay. So you see, uh, they take it as pre-med. Uh -huh. They finish that. When and they go to medical school, they're actually very good medical doctors. The okay. reason being they have that Already critical thinking. Great. Uh -huh. mm. So when they apply to medicine, they do very well. Wow. Um, in the U.S., they like taking biomedical engineers. Okay. Uh -huh. For, for, for pre -med. medical uh -huh. school. Okay. Yes. We have some that even go to law school. Mm. If you look at the patent attorneys, okay. yes, yeah. because technology, yes, they analyze to see whatever somebody is bringing, whether yeah. it's original and so on. Mm -hmm. So many of my mates went to do other things like this. So okay. they will go to law school. Mm. Uh, these days, you go even into into the banks. <laughs> if you banks? want to fall, yes, okay. calculate risk. <laughs> uh, all kinds of banking things you will find by medical engineers there because their training enables them to do that. Wow. If they choose to be clinical engineers, the ones in Ghana, most biomedical engineers in Ghana are clinical engineers. You'll find them in our hospitals. Mm. They are responsible for taking care of the equipment all the way from installation to decommissioning. Mm -hmm. Anything about that. Wow. Okay, so they decide, they can help decide which 
equipment to get into a hospital. They take care of the equipment in terms of installation or whatever is necessary when they come in. They maintain them. Uh -huh. So they have routine maintenance for them. If they, they don't work, they are responsible for making sure they work. Mm. They manage the equipment. Mm -hmm. wow. And if equipment needs to be put aside, they are the ones to decommission the equipment. That's, wow. that's what they are supposed that's to be doing as clinical engineers. That's in the hospital. a broad area. Some are in the education, <laughs> right? <Okay>. Me. <laughs> I'm an academic. I'm training more of them. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right, so you teach by, what What do you teach at the university? Okay, so I teach, I'm in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. Okay. I teach courses in biomaterials. Mm. Uh, biomaterials, the materials that we use as body replacement parts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so biomaterials. Okay. I teach uh, tissue engineering, mm. developing and designing human body parts. Wow. I also teach engineering design. Okay. Yes, those are the main things that I, I do. Wow, wow, mm. wow. Such a great woman you are. Very <laughs> intelligent, I must say. <laughs> but I see you enjoy what you do, teaching, mentoring. Yes. And uh, when I watch you on the National Science and Maths case, I see you're happy when the students are doing well, are getting the answers. But other times you're down yes. when you feel it's just a simple question, but they couldn't get it. Well, first of all, you need to understand why it happens that way. I'm so invested in the questions, <laughs> right? I see my role as <laughs> getting a question, right? Yeah. Checking, making sure the question is right and appropriate. And then bringing every single question to life. Yeah. That is, that is my challenge as a quiz mistress, okay? So after I have gone through all this, you know, we go through a whole lot of uh, <laughs> checks before I come and read that question out there. On the okay, so the subject consultant brought the question. We sat down as a team, read each question, moderated it, decided, okay, this is better this way or that way, decided that this is a good question, it's going to go. I came back home or wherever it is, I don't want to tell you where, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I had my time alone with the question, looked at it again, checked it for accuracy, made sure everything was fine with the question. I am so invested in every question. Then I ask you this beautiful question <laughs> and you give me an answer to make me up. <laughs> oh my goodness. I see it as a wasted question. <laughs> it's, it's personal. <laughs> so at that time, you take it personal. It's personal. And I can see it. Um, I mean, how you feel. You, 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 you're so down. Yeah. when it happens and like then if that. they keep getting that one wrong after the other uh, it's so, so no so. no no i don't like that <laughs> especially as a, uh, somebody who teaches or yes. a lecturer so yes. you feel bad about it but there are concerns about how we teach sciences yes. in this country so yes. much um to the extent that um science students cannot manufacture even uh, toy cars i mean that's sad enough um what's your position on this it's, it's one of our biggest challenges. We are not seeing our education as having a purpose. Well, at least not the right purpose, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, there is a purpose. If you ask the same students, the ones who are having this difficulty, they will tell you that there, there is a purpose. And the purpose has been for a very long time to go through the education system, get a certificate at the end of it, and then go and demand things. Okay. because they have been through a process yeah okay i think that's misdirected okay science is so powerful yeah. there is so much you can do with it and there are other, other places where this power is seen mm -hmm. if you only take it as a means to an end that certificate that is when we wind up with the situation that we are in right now wow. where the students cannot do what you just said mm. by the way let me put a caveat on it before i come back to this point again First thing is that there is a reason why we graduate knowledge, right? When mm -hmm. you go to nursery school, you are not expected to know certain things, everything. Yeah. And then you keep building and building. It may be the same topic, but at different levels, levels right? Yes. Okay. So in nursery school, in basic school, I am not expecting the students to come up with engineering products. There's a reason why engineering is done at the university. Mm -hmm. At those levels, they are supposed to get foundations, strong foundations. So if I bring up a theory, which of the theories do you like best? <laughs> which theory do you like best in science? In science. 
Hey, Pythagoras. Okay, theory. Pythagoras. <laughs> you like Pythagoras. In basic school, I expect you to know what the theory is. Okay. Under what circumstance can you apply Pythagoras' theory? Okay. What are the limitations of Pythagoras' theory? Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And if I give you a problem involving Pythagoras' theory, you should be able to know that, oh, this is Pythagoras that I should be using for this. Yeah. Okay? Yes. I'm not expecting you to build something Pythagoras. Yeah. Not at that stage. At that level. But if you understand while you are learning Pythagoras what you can potentially use it for, you are going to be much more uh, excited about it and you are going to be prepared to use it in the future when you have learned more. Yeah. To combine it with other things. Mm. Right? Okay, so we need a strong foundation and while we are giving our students the foundation, we should keep them excited about it. They should learn what it's supposed to be for. They can do simple experiments around it, right? Okay. So that they understand, they, they understand deeply what it is. Okay. Then when they go to engineering school now, they will be ready to use the same concept mm. to come up with solutions to real problems. Okay. Even at the basic school, yes, we can challenge them with certain problems, but we don't expect them to use the uh, theories that they have not yet encountered. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. So they can do certain things. It's supposed to be fun for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what it is. But mm. when you have gone through all this, you claim to understand Pythagoras, you understand so many other things, and then you come to university and you are sitting in my engineering class, and I ask you, to develop a solution <laughs> to a problem, or to even first identify a problem for me, and you tell me suddenly Ghana has no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it has happened to me before. You will be furious. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, it became personal. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> it's so painful. <laughs> yes, so it's because of the direction in which we've gone, mm. and then also a reliance on exams. Yeah, okay, so you know that there are schools now. Can you believe it? there are some nursery children, people in nursery school, mm. who are doing extra classes Sunday, Saturday, they are in school. Yeah. Doing what? <laughs> extra studies. <laughs> right? It's because they are preparing for exams. Yeah. They only, they, uh, there are many places where they are only getting taught how to take exams and yeah. do very well in exams. Mm -hmm. So when the focus becomes the exam, not the acquisition of knowledge, knowledge. so that the knowledge doesn't become part of us, it's mm. just to pass the exam. By the time they finish passing the exam, they have beautiful results. A, 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 they come and sit in my class, I ask a simple question, they don't... They get problems with the practical... Exactly, aspect. because, because, I'm because they ask, can't apply because the I'm knowledge. Because I'm not telling you what is Pythagoras, then you can quickly rattle it off for me. <laughs> no, I'm asking you to so use apply it, it to do something. Okay, that's uh, where that the was challenge not, is. That was not the focus. Can and we so can we teach it any better than we're doing now? Yes, we can. I'm so I'm so happy with what has been going on. A lot of us have been calling for a change, mm. and some of the changes are coming. Um, so I think I spoke to um, Dr. Duchum. Yeah, He's, he told me a little bit about the changes in the, the curriculum, and okay. the reforms that are coming. Mm. If really we're able to do that. Another thing to implement. That's uh -huh. So true. if you're able to implement it, that should make a difference. Mm. The other thing is there are so many other groups around the country doing wonderful things. You'll be amazed. Mm. So we have NSB, National Society of Black Engineers. Okay. They go around, they, they work with the schools, very various schools, all the way from basic school. They have members in the university and they have professional members. It's mm. one of the most powerful organizations if they can get the act together and work very well because mm. they have this wide range of <laughs> activities. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they go to the schools, they teach the students. Mm. Mm. Okay. And then they are professionals, so there's opportunity for mentorship as well. Mm. Okay. There's a practical education network that I'm working with now. I'm so okay. proud of them. Okay. They have targeted the teachers mm. because, you know, you cannot give what you don't have. Yeah. If you were taught a certain way mm. eh, to go for the certificate all the time, to only memorize things, you are likely to give the same thing back to your students. Definitely. Uh -huh. So they are trying to train the teachers to use simple things around us to teach. To teach. Wow. And I think they are making an impact. Okay. Uh -huh. So there are, there are groups around that are beginning to take up the challenge to do some of these things. Let me gauge your mood on um, lecturer-student relationship. How okay. is your relationship with your students? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not asking them? <laughs> 
I have a wide variety of, <laughs> of reviews. Mm. <laughs> They are the ones who like me. They are the ones who don't want to have anything to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> they are the ones who are in between. Okay. okay. So the ones who, uh, the ones who I think want to associate with me, usually they are the students who want to be challenged. Okay. Because I can't see how I can hang out with you, a student, uh, have a relationship with you, and then you are not working. Yeah. It's, it simply will not go well. <laughs> <laughs> Emotions will come in. <laughs> it will not go well. I have a lot of respect for my students because I think they have such potential. So when I see that you are not using your potential, I mean, you are not actualizing those potential, it bothers me and I will yeah. probably tell you, I am not bashful. I, I, of I, mind. I, I'm not bashful. I challenge my students. Okay. The ones that are looking for a challenge, you get them. Mm. Many students get back to me after they have been in my class, not while they are there. While they are there, they don't like me because I'm asking them to do every work I do, there's a course project. Okay. You will apply. <laughs> if I'm asking you for definition, probably 2% of the total mark. So you can't pass the course with just <laughs> memorization. And they, they don't like that. That means okay. they have to work extra hard. Extra hard. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So they normally come to me after the course, after they've gone to see the world and they've seen that, hey, the oh. world is not like classroom. Wow. Then they send me messages to thank me. Wow. But while they are there, some of them don't want to they do that. They don't like you. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're a lazy student, you will not get along with me. Okay. Some say I'm intimidating, although I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I'm usually amused and surprised when they tell me such things. Okay. But that's because I'm pre I have certain principles. Principle. Uh, I, I don't only teach the content. I also teach the character surrounding our profession. Yeah. If you're an engineer, time consciousness is non-negotiable. Yeah. So you can't keep to time. I have left people field trip. You see the bus leaving and then taxis following. <laughs> because you know where we are going. We were supposed to meet at a certain time to leave. You come late. We won't be there. So you have to follow with your, with your taxi. source of transport. <laughs> uh -huh. So if you don't like things like this, we won't get along. Definitely you mm -hmm. won't get along. Yes, but I'm not in a popularity contest. I, I, my aim is not to please. My but, aim but, is to educate. But, but of course, just like you said, students don't want to learn, but they want lecturers to give them good grades. Oh, yeah. And uh, so a lot of times they don't get along with you. They get angry because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, why did she give me this grade? Yes. I deserve better than this. Yes. Other times, students say they are failed because lecturers asked them one or two things and they refused so the lecturers fail them i mean all of these how do you handle some of these situations okay yes you are very right when it's an some a even attack you physically uh, thankfully nobody has attacked me physically <laughs> <laughs> as for wet uh, <laughs> water of the ducks <laughs> anyway yes yeah, so normally if it's an a I got an A, very proud. Yes. I got an A. If it's something else, <laughs> she gave me. <laughs> <laughs> what I like to do, and I think, you know, university doesn't usually allow, there's a final exam. Uh, usually we don't uh, give back. I, I think we should change that, uh, that, that philosophy because I like to do that. The script, you yes, mean? Yes, yes. I, I feel the students need feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're a student in my class, you wrote an exam, it went badly. First of all, I'm always available and my students know this unless you are not paying attention. They have, I have many ways you can be reached. Book an appointment, come to my office, uh, even WhatsApp I respond to. Mm -hmm. okay. Feedback. So what I do is I have on occasion the ones who don't really believe that I think I really wrote, I did well. Okay, <laughs> come. I, will I give, give you a preamble. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you your script, of course, in the presence of a witness. Okay. I will give you your script. I will give you even my marking scheme. Then you go through. Then you go through and tell me whether what the things you wrote are right. Wow. You see that afterwards, it's like they have been. Wow. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Dr. Elsie Ifa Kaufman is my guest tonight. She received Best Teacher Award for the Sciences in 2009 whilst a fellow of the International Women's Forum Leadership Foundation. Not just that, when I return from this break, Dr. Ifa Kaufman will be telling us more about her recognitions.
Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. Dr. Ifa Kaufman is my guest. We're having fun here. Doc, um, are you still a member of the International Women's Forum Foundation? Um, no, I'm not a member of the national... Um, international, okay. Yes, there are actually national uh, groupings of okay. women. Okay, okay. Yes, so after you are a fellow, you have the opportunity, I think, two or three years later on to join the national mm. group. Okay. I am not a member of the national group. I'm not even sure there's one in place yet. In Ghana. In Ghana. <laughs> yes, but I, I am recognized as a fellow okay. of the Leadership Foundation of the International mm. Women's Forum. Yes. Okay. Okay. So in 2009, Best Teacher Sciences. Yes. In 2011 and 2017, Impact Africa Summit Laureate for Education in Ghana. Mm -hmm. First female recipient of 2018 Golden Touch Award for International Academic Leadership by the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm really proud of that one. <laughs> Award for International <laughs> Academic Leadership in recognition of your excellence in support of academics on an international level and exhibition of commitment to science, yes. technology, engineering, and mathematics. Wow. Yes. Tell me about all these awards. Yes, so I, I was a member of NSBE as a student. Wow. In the U.S. Uh, yes. As a student in the U.S., right from my first year, I joined NSBE, National Society of Black Engineers in the U.S. Okay. And I was a member. I didn't, I mean, I did the activities, uh, but I wasn't really uh, recognized. I mean, I didn't do anything exceptional there. Okay. Then I came to Ghana, and there was a, a group in Ghana, branch, the branch uh, uh, of NSBE, on University of Ghana campus. So they asked me to be their patron. Wow. So I was their patron. I was in the Department of Physics at the time. So mm -hmm. I was their patron. I've been their patron since that time. Okay. <laughs> yes. And so they recommended me, the national, uh, the uh, NSB National, mm. Ghana, okay. decided to nominate me for this award. Mm. So NSB, the International Association, basically they have an award for academic leadership and it can go anywhere in the world. Okay. Yes. So, uh, they nominated me and I was surprised to get the good news that I had been selected to receive that award wow. in 2018. Yes, in 2018. So that's when I, I got the award and the idea is a contribution to STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics in Ghana and then also internationally because of the activities I do. You know, I have a program with the University of Michigan. We developed academic programs for engineering students. Okay. Uh -huh, mm. In biomedical engineering okay. and also mechanical engineering. Mm. So all of these activities, all the things that I had been doing quietly, I didn't think anyone was observing. They had been <laughs> taking note of and they, they invited me to receive that award. And I was the first female to receive that award. Wow. Internationally. Yes. Wow. Wow. We're so proud of you. Thank but you. of course, talking about international National Women um, Fellowship or Foundation means that you have the passion to empower women. On our ballot, we have three women. How do you feel about this? <laughs> That's amazing. It's the first time it's happened, right? The very first time. Yes, and we also have women. a major, um, a major political party with a female running mate. Running mate. Yes, that's 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 good. I mean, it means that women are actually beginning to be visible. Mm. So it, it's good. What would be your expectation of them? They should do well. <laughs> Because when they do well, all of us do well. <laughs> and then hopefully the sciences, the women in the sciences will also become more visible. Okay. All of us. Mm. Yes. But generally, uh, there are certain areas where women have been underrepresented. Politics is one of them. My STEM. Yeah. <laughs> Engineering. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> we are few uh, underrepresented. We are, we are significantly underrepresented. So okay. hopefully the fact that uh, in politics they are making this progress, we also should also be doing our part to, to be more visible and mm. eventually we will have the diversity that is necessary. You know, problem solving, there's been a lot of research to show that uh, we have better solutions to complex problems when we have a more diverse group. So if our population is more than 50% and we are so underrepresented in areas where we need to make decisions and do problem solving, we should be concerned, all of us. Why do you think women you are underrepresented, for instance, in your field. Why do you think a lot of women don't like going there? What's the, ch what's the problem? <laughs> you know, I, I tell my students, you know, I use a Newton's first law, 
Newton's first law of motion. A body mm. will continue in a state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless there's an external force. Okay. So for many years, it's been a historical thing. For many, many years, we have been underrepresented. And so if you don't put in strong interventions, nothing will change. Yeah. Okay. So this, this is what the, the problem really is. So a young lady or a young a girl trying to decide what to do will look around and when they see people doing what they are thinking of, they are more likely to feel it's possible. But when there's nobody in that area for them to look up to, it's much more difficult to say I'm going in that direction. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think that's one of the key issues. That's why I take mentorship so seriously. The reason being we don't have the mentors. We don't have the people who have blazed those trails. Not enough of them. Not enough visibility by women in those areas. So those coming up don't see it as a viable option. Mm. Uh -huh. That's one of the main things. There are many others. There's a lot of research has been done over the years. And uh -huh. uh, as a woman, how do you feel when you hear um, girls on campus who don't want to read but want to maybe give in something to get grades, sex for grades? It is most unfortunate. It is most unfortunate because it's sort of like, you know, you are weaving a fabric in one direction and somebody is <laughs> undoing it as you, <laughs> you know, two <laughs> steps forward, one step back. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it doesn't help at all. Yeah. It doesn't help at all. It helps to perpetuate the, the stereotypes and, and it does not help at all. The people that involve themselves in this is because of immediate gain, you know. So you want the certificate, we talked about certificate earlier on, you want the certificate at all costs. Yeah. Not because you want to be a problem solver, not because you want to contribute anything, but to get this <laughs> unsustainable <laughs> success. It's, it's unfortunate, we need to be more forward looking. Mm. But it saddens me, it saddens me yeah. to hear that such things uh, happen. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm curious to know, what, what are your hobbies? Do you have a leisure time? What do you do? Yes, hobbies. I like traveling. Uh, of course, we are all grounded in the time of COVID. Definitely. Not going anywhere. <laughs> but uh, traveling, I like traveling, seeing new places. I like interacting with people, right? So you mm. see, another thing that makes me so happy to be on stage with those young people, interacting okay. with new people, getting ideas, are being around yeah. uh, bright minds. Okay. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I read a lot, mm. but I don't know if you will consider that a hobby. If I'm not reading textbooks, it is. Textbooks, <laughs> it is. I am, I'm reading <laughs> other things. Okay. So I read everything and Novels, anything. Yes, graphic, I read everything and newspapers, anything. Newspapers, everything. I read everything and anything. Mm. I will read. I, I I read a lot. I like reading. Um, what else? Yes, mysteries, adventures. Okay, <laughs> your adventures. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yes, that's what I've been doing. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. do, do you sometimes um, also like to spend time with the family or you, your kids are grown up, so you've left them to... No, 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 no. And that's I, one of them, very beautiful yes. lady. Yes, my kids are incredible. <laughs> there are three of them. Okay. Each of them very different in their own way. How many? Um, two boys, one girl, or two girls, one Two boy. girls and then a boy. And a boy. I <laughs> think I saw yes. the boy's picture as well. Okay. Yeah. So um, the, the first girl also went to University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> she, she graduated in 2020. Hooray, Maya. Hooray, <laughs> Mommy. Yes. Steph. <laughs> yes. So okay. she graduated, she'll be coming home soon. Okay. And then uh, Davis is the one you met. Yeah. She's a university at, uni uh, she's at university, University of Ghana. Okay. Studying economics. Wow. Yes. And then the last one is Kofi. <laughs> Kofi <laughs> is in school now. Okay. <laughs> Senior high school. Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. And I like to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I tell them my job with them is really to make myself progressively redundant. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I give them more and more freedoms every year, uh, but then there's a caveat that I hope that after they are completely free of me, they will still choose to spend time with me. And oh. so far, they are doing that. So good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. But I know you also love music. Oh. You do. Aisha, you are starting this. You do. And um, this is what the Alleluia Chorus. Yes, I you like love classical it. music. You like I can help 
you sing. Let's do this together. This is an anthem. For you, sing. <laughs> you are doing well. We should really stand up. This is a, this is a great anthem. Dr. Thank Elsie you for playing that for me. Kaufman, <laughs> thank you so much for allowing us into your life. I really, really enjoy talking to you and keep up the good work. We're really proud of you. Thank Viewers, you. thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, we'll be bringing you another exciting edition of Personality Profile. My name is Aisha Brian. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs.